Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. Today I feel like doing a spring-inspired abstract, and we're going to go for some springy colors. I can't wait to get some nice eggshell blues, some soft spring greens, and some pop of some light yellows. going to look fantastic, colors that are going to flow very nicely together. I can't wait. So today we're going to start with a mixture of all three of the colors on our palette. We have on our palette today titanium white, cobalt blue, and cadmium yellow medium. We're going to mix a good deal of the white with the blue and the yellow. You might know about secondary colors. Of course, that's when you mix together two primaries. We have our three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And when you mix two of them together, you get a secondary color. But what you might not know about, unless you have studied color theory, of course, you might not know about tertiary colors. Now, tertiary colors are the colors that we're using in this very painting. It's when you mix a fully saturated color, very pure color, like bright yellow or cobalt blue, and then you mix it with a half saturated color, a color that's been desaturized by adding more white. And when you mix those two together, you get a tertiary color. It's sort of a muted version of the secondary color. If I mix blue and yellow, I get green. But if I mix yellow with a light blue, I get this kind of minty green or this spring green. And when I get that color, that spring green, that's not a secondary color, that's actually a tertiary color. Interesting little bit of trivia for you. You can see I'm working very quickly today on this piece and I want it to be very fresh. I have underneath the layer of gesso that's on there is another painting that I did. It was an oil abstract that I painted a while ago. Didn't like the way it turned out, just didn't feel like it translated on the small scale very well. So I covered it up with the gesso. So there's a great deal of texture on that canvas already. If you want to get the similar level of texture on your canvas without having another painting underneath, of course, you can do so by mixing together PVA glue with Plaster of Paris. Now, I don't have a video about that particular topic, but my good friend Dave Usher, fellow artist and YouTuber, you can check out his channel, and I know that he has a video on how to prepare your canvases using the combination of those two ingredients, PVA glue and Plaster of Paris. It looks phenomenal. It's a very similar effect to what I have going on here, and so definitely check out that video. Check out his other videos, too. He's a fantastic artist does lovely watercolors and acrylic paintings. Anyways, um, back to this piece. So I'm mixing together this kind of spring green as my base layer, base color, and then I am putting in streaks of blue, yellow, and white, and doing kind of a counter change between them. I want some areas of dark, I want some areas of light, and I want a lot of movement and vivacity in this piece. Gotta be very full of life and just needs to spring, pardon the pun, off the canvas at you. Very cool, calming colors, I think, for the most part. The yellow has the nice heat and warmth to it, but that blue cools everything down, and the green tends to favor the blue, so it's kind of a cooler composition overall. I love the way the yellow interacts with the blue. It looks so lovely. We'll add a little more white just to calm this down a bit. Blend that together. You can notice that I am not being terribly careful with my brushwork and I'm changing the direction on purpose, trying to get some interesting interactions between them. I don't want everything to be too static or everything going the same direction. I want some of these lines and colors interacting and crossing over one another in this piece and it has to be visually striking. Make sure that you have your colors reaching the borders at different intersections having your colors interact with the borders of the piece means that it makes the work feel like it's going to expand and reach either the other canvas or it will let your work feel like it's part of a whole. If you kind of center all your colors in the center and a border around the whole thing, it makes the work feel very contained. So having the actual colors hit the borders of the canvas board there really makes it impactful and makes your work feel larger than it actually is.
These two paintings of course can be displayed together and they will function as one cohesive painting, but you also can frame them separately. And in fact, I think I'm going to do that. I have two little photo frames. Love using canvas board for painting because canvas boards can be put into a normal picture frame, unlike the thicker sided uh, canvases where you have to get them custom framed, which is more expensive, of course. So having these little great for practice canvas boards means that you can frame them very easily and very cheaply when you are done. Here is the cadmium yellow, bringing that in. Just going to warm up the bottom edge here, a little more blue after that, I think. That looks better. And we have this sort of marble swirl effect. I'm just loving the way this is looking. Really like the way the right hand cam has turned out. I feel like it's a little more cohesive and the colors are working a little bit better than this left hand canvas, but by degrees and with some effort, we'll get the left hand looking just as good. If you're ever painting abstracts, sort of assembly line process, you can take three or four of them, paint them all together, and then one or two of them will turn out usually better than the others. And you can keep those and just repaint with some gesso, layer over the one that didn't turn out as well, and paint another painting on top. And with that, we are already done. Here is some close-ups, and then you'll see the final piece.